this is actually an impromptu episode, and uh, so there's not going to be a big intro or anything, but uh, I just was puttering around. I just wanted to open this on my own, and then I realized, hey, you all might be interested. So this is just an opening of the uh, Universal Genève Senna chronograph. Um, it's one of the ones in my collection, and what I was thinking when I opened it was um, I've been debating whether or not to buy, um, to rebuy actually a Rolex Explorer 2, um, one of the few Rolexes that I would actually uh, buy because I do believe it's a, that's one of the few uh, quote unquote values left. Um, I had one and sold it. Uh, I don't regret selling it because uh, it wasn't of a level of um, repair. I had I had it serviced and uh, I found out later that it had a fake end link, which I mean, the watch is a, uh, you know, not its bracelet, but still the bracelet is part of the watch. So I don't regret selling that one, but I do miss the Explorer. I'm buying actually uh, um, an ex uh, Omega Seamaster GMT to see if that scratches uh, the itch because I've got my um, Mont Blanc Geosphere and uh, that's a wonderful uh, travel watch, but I wouldn't take it someplace that it would get banged up, but I would take uh, the Omega or the Explorer to, uh, you know, uh, travel to someplace where I wouldn't worry about it getting wet or bumped into. <clears throat> now, uh, the reason I was thinking about this watch uh, today was I'm also debating getting an IWC Pilot. And if you saw one of my earlier episodes, I opened up an IWC Pilot that had a Valju 7750 in it. <clears throat> and uh, they did a fantastic job on that watch. Uh, IWC, it may be a Valju 7750 base, but by the time IWC is finished with it, uh, you don't recognize it. And uh, I thought, you know what? Oh, uh, but uh, quick pitch to the Longines. The Longines has got a column wheel 7750. The Valju 7750 in the IWC is still a cam. And so is the one in this one. Um, this is the Universal Genève Senna. Uh, I have a video on this as well. And um, essentially, I wanted to see what the Valju 7750 inside this looks like, because this was Universal Genève's last hurrah. Um, this is the bracelet that it came with. Uh, they called it uh, carbon. Uh, they didn't call it carbon fiber, but they called it carbon. Uh, but if you see, the uh, links are fake. They're just screwed on. They're not load-bearing links. They're cosmetic. So in a lot of ways, this watch had a lot of promise. It looks good. The bracelet's actually well-fitting and supple. Um, and it does look cool, but yeah, it's, 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 the Germans would say a trappa. It's um, a facade. It's fake. I mean, it's not a fake bracelet, but I mean the carbon aspect of it. And the same thing here. They put these around the end links and uh, they, they're not load bearing either. You see the, the uh, holes in the lugs go into metal, not into the plastic. The plastic is just there uh, for cosmetic. I mean, there's probably carbon material in the plastic somewhere is filler and color but yeah it's not carbon in the sense that we think of it today and so i thought you know they didn't do a bad job with the face and like i said i have a more expanded video on it uh, and the uh, indices and all so i thought maybe the the uh, movement would be in good shape so i took out the tools and i'll take a quick look at the back real quick Universal Genève. So this was their last hurrah. They had um, gone out of business. They had gotten purchased by a Chinese uh, organization. And this is made in Switzerland. Uh, but yeah, they, they swung and missed. This is the neatest, cleanest 7750 I have ever seen that wasn't attached uh, to a really, really, really um, basic watch. Now, the balance and adjustment system seem a little tuned than the average, uh, but not in any significant way. There is no decoration anywhere on this movement, none. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that's the base value 7750. You can buy it uh, like this or with more decoration on it. I don't even think the base available today is as undecorated as this one. 
Uh, the only decoration is the uh, Universal Genève uh, engraved rotor with uh, some BS, uh, mu uh, you know, number for their movement. And then here, there are some other, uh, there are some other numbers engraved in there, like there's one over here. And um, there's some, it talks about the jewels. So it's, yeah, <laughs> it's a milk toast, plain Jane, Nothing wrong with having a plain 7750, but uh, if you're going to try to uh, relaunch your brand and rescue it from oblivion, uh, you need to swing harder than that. Uh, this is actually my uh, beater uh, watch because it's a rugged, I mean, the 7750 is reliable as hell, rugged as hell. Um, so this is my beater watch. I don't mind if it gets beaten up. The plastic actually doesn't scratch at all. I mean, I've, that's one good thing about it. It just doesn't really seem to scratch. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice watch to wear. Uh, it's worth about, I don't know, thousand fifteen hundred, which is about par for the course for any value 7750 based, uh, watch that wasn't, uh, made to fake another piece. And, um, yeah, it shows you that the IWC is totally worth it because it, the way the IWC treats the 7750 makes this look like a knockoff of a better watch. Um, that's the nice thing about this is that at least it isn't a knockoff of a better watch. It's its own watch. It's just a good watch, not a great watch. I think I damn it with faint praise in my video. So uh, thanks for taking the time for this quick little episode. I just wanted to show you what was inside this thing and um, have a great day.